this talk will be um, on the question I left open at the end of the last talk. Um, properly, how to properly learn these Poisson binomial distributions. Now, if you recall, a Poisson binomial distribution is a sum of independent but not necessarily identical binomials, and we gave this uh, non-proper learning algorithm. We give this hypothesis in terms of log one over epsilon coefficient for the discrete Fourier transform. And the question we're interested here is: Can we find a, di a, a distribution close to the distribution we get samples from, which is a Poisson binomial distribution and not just any distribution? Um, we, we also gave uh, an algorithm for this in terms of um, proper epsilon covers, which had running time one over epsilon to the log one over epsilon, which is not that efficient. And we know because of the we also had a cover size lower band that we can't do any better with this approach. So the obvious question is, uh, can we properly learn Poisson binomial distributions in polynomial time? The answer to that is, we don't know. But I want to try and convince you that this is an interesting problem. Um, so, the yeah, so the next question is, well, can we do better than this brute force 1 over epsilon to the log 1 over epsilon? And the answer to that is yes. We can, with nearly optimal sample complexity, get 1 over epsilon to the log log 1 over epsilon running time. Um, now, th th there's an interesting uh, connection of this to a uh, problem about uh, real rooted polynomials, which have had some applications in computer science recently. Um, so we consider the probability generating function, which is given by this expectation. Obviously, when we add independent random variables, we take convolutions of the distribution, and we also get convolutions by multiplying polynomials. So this thing is going to be a product of the probability generating functions of each of the Bernoulli's, which is particularly simple. So this thing's a polynomial, and this factorization tells you exactly what the roots are um, in terms of the, the probabilities of each of these Bernoulli's. And you'll notice they're all real and negative. Um, and in general, if you have this distribution supported on inches from 0 to n, then this probability generating function will be a polynomial of degree n. And now if all roots of this polynomial are real, then we can factorize it something like this. And that basically gives, us, gives you the parameters for a Poisson binomial distribution. So anything which ha any distribution whose uh, probability generating function is a polynomial with, with real roots is a Poisson binomial distribution. And thus, using the, the non-proper learning algorithm I outlined in the last talk, we can reduce this problem to the problem to a, a problem in polynomial optimization. Um, given a polynomial which is close to a polynomial with all real roots, we want to find a polynomial with all real roots that's close to it. Closest here being, because it's total variational distance between distributions, being L1 distance between the, the coefficients of the polynomials. Um, now, our algorithm actually gives uh, our algorithm, which is expressed in terms of Poisson binomial distributions, does give a solution to this question. Now, I don't know that they're quite equivalent. Um, now, I want to briefly give a flavour of how the algorithm works. Um, so, uh, thanks to the cover size having an exponent of log one over epsilon, we know that we need log 1 over epsilon parameters. Log 1 over epsilon parameters is the right number of um, parameters to give to approximate a Poisson binomial distribution to within epsilon. And we can do that using one over epsilon, these log 1 over epsilon coefficients of the discrete Fourier transform. We can also do it, as has been used in previous work, with, uh, in terms of power sums, these sums of powers of the parameters. Um, and these things are related. In particular, we, we can consider this uh, we look at the Taylor expansion of the log Fourier transform, we can get these coefficients of the discrete Fourier transform as a polynomial in, in basically in the parameters, um, which has degree log 1 over epsilon. Now, th th this is a symmetric polynomial, and this has the interesting consequence using some results in algebraic geometry, that every Poisson binomial distribution is close to another Poisson binomial distribution, but which the parameters only have log 1 over epsilon distinct values. So we have we still have lots of parameters, but most of them are going to be you know identical to um, 
So we only have log one reps on distinct sets of parameters which aren't identical to each other, um, equivalent to classes. And our output is going to be in this form. We can express it concisely, right? Uh, we have log one of epsilon parameters, and each of them has a multiplicity. How many of them we, we have? And this, this, so this is another way of expressing uh, a distribution close to a pass-up by Hamu distribution in terms of uh, log one of epsilon parameters. And uh, we can get the, these coefficients of the discrete Fourier transform as a polynomial in uh, these things. But these are the things we know how to learn. And this is a representation as a, a it's a proper representation. It's a representation as a Parson binomial distribution. So what we need to do to do the proper learning is to reverse this. Um, now, with there's, a, there's an algorithm. There are algorithms for the decision procedure for the existential theory of reals given by Canning and Renegar, which can solve systems like this, as long as all our free variables are real numbers. And so the problem we have is that these multiplicities are integers. Um, we can get around them by guessing them, as long as we can get them from a small set of multiplicities. Uh, if we do this naively, it's not going to work. We'll end up with 1 over epsilon to the log, 1 over epsilon possible multiplicities, which is the bound we're trying to beat. Um, so we have to do something more clever. Uh, basically, when the variance is large, we need fewer parameters. When um, the parameters are close to 0 and 1, we need fewer. But when the variance is small, we don't have many parameters. Most of our parameters are going to be close to 0 and 1. We can only have a few in the middle. And um, we can do something clever with intervals and counting to get this result that we only need to look at 1 over epsilon the log log 1 over epsilon. Um, different sets of multiplicities. And so our algorithm will be, um, we do what we did before. We take samples, estimate the effective support, calculate the discrete Fourier transform at these log 1 over epsilon points. And then we iterate over our multiplicities. And then for each of these, we want to solve a system of polynomial inequalities. It's going to have log 1 over epsilon. It's going to have degree 1 over epsilon. It's going to have log 1 over epsilon free variables. And using algorithms given by Renegar, we can solve this in log 1 over epsilon to the log 1 over epsilon time, which, of course, is also 1 over epsilon to log log 1 over epsilon. And um, one of these systems is going to have a solution, and that will give us uh, a Poisson binomial distribution, which is close to the original. Um, notice here we have two steps which have this running time of 1 over epsilon to log log 1 over epsilon, so it's going to be quite hard to improve this to polynomial time. Uh, we've got to improve both of these. Uh, which means that we're probably going to have to use a different approach. Um, so in conclusion, um, we give an algorithm for properly learning plus and binomial distributions, which runs in this strange time 1 over epsilon to log log 1 over epsilon, beating our previous bound of 1 over epsilon to log 1 over epsilon. Um, and the big open question is, can we improve this to polynomial time? And uh, it's an interesting problem. And we, as I said, we have this connection to um, this non-convex polynomial optimization problem. Uh, and there have been plenty of applications of real root and polynomials. I don't know if this has any other, any is useful to any of the people who are doing things with those. Um, and that's, that's it. Uh, that's all. Thank you for listening.